uh, it is my pleasure to be here to share Ethiopian experience in uh, achieving IFA goal and the problem we have in post 2015. Just uh, to give uh, uh, some overview about Ethiopia. Ethiopia is an ancient country in, which is located in East Africa. And uh, the size of Ethiopia is it's almost 1,127,127 ,127 square kilometer, uh, which is uh, almost three times of uh, Japan. The population is almost 94 million. This is from the, the data from the World Bank. Uh, Ethiopia is uh, um, a number, there are a number of uh, ethnic groups in Ethiopia, linguistic groups, which is recently, it is nine, uh, more than 90. And the annual education budget is uh, 1.7 billion USD which is very, very small, as, uh, but it is uh, too much as compared to the country's budget. In any way, we have a very small amount of money to spend to education. Ethiopia has, I mean, a different structure. We have uh, uh, 10 years general education of which uh, is 80 for primary school. And we have also uh, uh, two years uh, for secondary, lower secondary, and two years for preparatory education. And uh, the school age population uh, is almost it's universal almost, but in our country it is uh, nine to, I mean seven to eight. The number of population, uh, school population is 26 million, which is uh, almost more than one-fourth of the population is in a school by this time. And the number of teachers is almost half a million. That is 438,975. And the number of schools are 34,318. Uh, and this is just to give you uh, a snapshot on the education system of Ethiopia now. Uh, before I go to the details of our achievement in uh, IFA, I'll try to show you a summarized achievement of uh, education. That is the, the enrollment growth now. As you can see from this uh, graph, before 20 years, the population, the number of uh, children in a school were three million. There were three million, that is, in all st um, in stage of uh, schooling, that is from grade one to grade 12 now. And then uh, this is just right from, uh, at the beginning of the, the I mean, the present, st I mean, government take place now. During that time, uh, the total number of uh, children were three, three, three million. Uh, we were not able to reach all children in the, in the country uh, because of different reasons we have. But now, after 20 years, we were able to reach uh, almost 21 uh, million, now, which does not include the recent data now. This is only uh, 2013, 14 data. It we, uh, there is, I mean, we didn't include uh, the, I mean, uh, the last data of uh, 2015. Anyway, but you can see this is how we can just uh, uh, able to expand schooling for uh, all children in the country. So this is actually the summary, but the challenge. The challenge was very, very serious now. In 2000, in 2000, uh, I mean, in, uh, I mean, in 2000, uh, 2018, you know, nine, 
when we see the first, I mean, the starting point, and the problem we have, because we just came up after a civil war of a long time, uh, many people were worried about how we can expand education in this country. Someone says that now. It is, you can see, you can read from directly from this one now. At the beginning, the enrollment rate was very, very small. Now. And pupils were worried about that. It could not be reached easily to uh, ignore most of the children in the country. But we have uh, tried, I mean, we have just worked very hard in education so that to bring all children to schools. I'll now go, go to just what was the achievement of, uh, of uh, the last 15 years now. Uh, the achievement could be, could be explained in terms of uh, access and, uh, I mean, expansion of facilities, educated in the correct age, great gender equity. Increasing the access, uh, primary grades want to a gross enrollment rate now. Now, it was at the beginning, it was 26% of the school children were in a school now. Having uh, a very hard work now, we are now able to reach 97% of the children are now in a school now. And a huge expansion of facilities. A schools numbers uh, numbers up from, as a beginning from, uh, it was 7,900. It was in this 1985. But to, in 2014, uh, we were able just to expand the number of schools to be 35,318. For Ethiopia, in fact, which comes from uh, a very long civil war. It was very difficult just to expand these schools uh, from uh, uh, seven, um, from 8,000 to uh, 35,000 now. It's very difficult for us now. Besides uh, the low infrastructure in our country now, the, uh, it was very difficult again just to reach the people who are living in uh, uh, rural areas now, because of the infrastructure we have. Now. And having all this problem, we were achieved at least to reach every child, I mean, every, I mean, small districts of the country. Nowadays, we have a school uh, to the nearest of the children now three kilometers away from the children's residence. It is, this is a great achievement for us. Uh, the other one is, uh, you know, is, uh, I mean, uh, most of you may be aware of that in the developing countries, children's labor is used by the parents, and parents do not want to send their children to school. So it was very difficult for us again just to bring children now, and having uh, I mean, a high dropout rate at grade, grade one. But the government was very, mu very much committed. It is our only option that we have to, in order to develop, to teach, or to educate our people. We rely on the, our, our people now. Unless we educate our people, it is impossible uh, at least to develop now. For a country like Ethiopia, it will be, I mean, it is a very difficult mm, one. So the government, the decision of the government was correct, and we were focusing on expanding education. So we were able just to bring children on their age to school now. And the other problem we have and which is common to the all developing countries, the gender equity. You know, in Ethiopia, many of, I mean, those peoples who are living in remote areas are pastoralist uh, people. And then the problem is they don't want to send their mm, 
children to schools, particularly female students. It is the problem of the, the culture. But again, we aggressively work on this area, and we are able to just to bring the gender equity from being 0.66 to 0.94 now. Still, we have some gap in this area. So, what are the factors for having this achievement? In fact, this is uh, a good achievement. But there is the reason why we have got this great achievement is uh, can be seen from four factors. And the first one is uh, the government commitment. Uh, you know, before 20 years, before 20 years, education is not for the, I mean, the mass of the, for the masses. It was for the only elite who are living in the uh, cities. The government, after, after taking the power, was strongly committed to transform this situation and to provide education to all the children in Ethiopia. And then this is a strong commitment of the government which helps us just to achieve this uh, achievement. And the other one is a strong guide, guiding document. Our education is very well, very well organized. We have an education policy which for the first time allows children to learn in their mother tongue. Before 20 years, we have only one language. All children in every, I mean, in all the country were forced to learn using only one language. It is after this that all children are allowed to learn with their mother tongue language. And this is also the commitment of the government. Uh, besides, we have a well-structured plan for education. After 20 years, I mean, before the 20 years, we have started to develop plan, education sector development plan. So far, we have uh, done four education sector development plan. Just on this time, we are now on developing the FIVS education sector development plan. It is because of these well-planned uh, activities that we are successful in uh, achieving EFA goals. And beside that, there is a public commitment have been supported by sustained implementation involving significant increase in expenditure. In Ethiopia, the public is highly involved, highly involved in education. Almost all the school structures, all the school facilities, the expense of the school facilities is covered by the community. The contribution of the government in some areas is limited just by providing teachers. Otherwise, other expenditure or the building, the construction of the school is covered by the community. Where this shows that the highly commitment of the community in uh, education. So, you can see from this one uh, how the government is committed to expand education or to educate the nation. It was uh, in 1980, in 1980, the, edu the educational expenditure was 9% of the GDP. But now, it is 25% of the GDP. Now. But in terms of money, it may be very small, as our GDP is very small. Otherwise, we are spending a lot of money to education. 25% is not a simple, uh, I mean, a small amount of number. It is huge as compared to the education. This shows that the commitment of the government for education. The second one is, uh, the increased decentralization. Uh, before 20 years, Ethiopia was a central government. 
But after the 20 years now, we have uh, different regions where power is shared by these regions. And regions, we have, uh, I mean, nine regions, two administrative cities. Education is very centralized, and it is a region who are responsible for primary school, schooling and college level schooling. Only the universities are under the uh, federal state, but all the activities of education are run by the regions. Uh, and what we, the, the federal government do for the region is we distribute block grants to the regions, from regions to the districts. Uh, you know, this decentralization of education is very important because it allows us at least to lead effectively and to see what the local needs are. And it will enable us to address the local needs if education is very high decentralized. It's nowadays, the primary education is just led by the district, district level. It is a district who is responsible to lead all the activities of the school. It is a district who is responsible just for support of and control of the schools. Uh, so, local authorities are held accountable now. Accountability is also there by region and the federal government. Services are provided more efficiently than by highly centralized government. I think this is a, the behavior of um, the decentralized government. We chose this one because we found it very effective. And besides that, Ethiopia is uh, multicultural and people with diverse culture are living. So power should be divided among these people now, rather than making it centralized. We have seen we have seen the advantage of centralized government. It was ended up by, um, with a conflict now, which which uh, was the cause of poverty now, poverty of, of my country. So, as I, I ha as I have told you at the beginning, I have already mentioned that one, the success of uh, achieving IFA goal is also depend upon the strong participation of the community. I have already mentioned that how the community are participated. It's not only in construction of the school. Community are also participated in leading schools now. Schools are led by uh, a committee which is composed of teachers and parents. And communities have a great role in uh, administrating schools. And so the other, the fourth one is uh, the effective development cooperation. As I have told you that uh, even if we have spent 25% of our GDP to education, because of our small GDP, we cannot cover all the expense of education in our country. In this regard, I would, I would like to thank all the donors, now, including the government of Japan, who have contributed for the growth of uh, and expansion of education in Ethiopia. And it is because of this support that we were also successful in IFAGO. Uh, the nowadays, because of the result we have, because of the result we have, donor cooperation is increasing from time to time. 
and government mobilized large donor commitment to education sector performance. I mean reforms now. In this day, we have a project called General Education Quality Improvement Program, where many of donors are uh, working in this area. Many, I mean, sufficient number of uh, money was put in the, uh, this program. Uh, the participation of donors is not only just providing money for the program, it also, uh, they are also participating in developing the plan. They are also participating in, uh, I mean, by sharing expertise. Uh, one of a good example for this is the project we have, Semasi Weska, which focuses on science and mathematics. I think this is clear for all of you that we want to focus on science and mathematics so that to transform our country from the level we are now to the level middle income country in the coming 2025. This is our vision. So that to reach this, we need engineers, we need medical doctors, we need highly qualified pupils. So to have these pupils, we need to focus on science and mathematics. We felt that science and mathematics is fundamental. So a special focus was given to science and mathematics. With this, our Japanese partners are helping us. Right now, we are working to improve the quality of science and mathematics education with the support of JICA. Thank you for that, for that one. Uh, so, then this is all what we have uh, in terms of uh, achievement. But still we have a problem remain. As I told you, we have aggressively worked to access education for all children. It was true that there will be a quality problem. The quality is a problem that we have, quality education for children. And what is the remain, uh, uh, I mean, the challenge that we will have uh, in the, uh, beyond 2050 will be uh, Still, it is on access and equity, and then uh, I'll go back to quality now. But uh, access, when I say access, we work very hard, and we were achieved to expand schools to all of the countries now. Uh, still, we have a problem. The problem is uh, there are more than 3 million children by this day who are out of school. We need to reach these people, these children. We were able just to uh, bring all children to the schools now. Still, 3 million schools and 3 million children are out of school. Besides now, there is high dropout rate at grade one level. Uh, there is also a problem of uh, uh, significant gender and regional gap enrollment remain. We have uh, uh, 11, I mean nine uh, regions and uh, two administrative administrative uh, city, and among these nine regions, we have four regions which are relatively backward as compared to the other one. And these regions have a problem in, different, in, uh, in development, 
infrastructure as well, and instability also as well there. So because of that, we were not able to reach these children in this region. And that will be the challenge we have in 2015 now. We will focus on this so that to reach all children. Most of the children who are out of school are now are from these regions. Uh, and in these regions, again, we have the problem of gender. Girls are not allowed for schooling. It's of uh, the problem is origin in this region. So we have, of course, designed a strategy just to bring uh, girls to school. We have a different strategy for that one. However, still we have a problem. Now. We need to work with the community. We need uh, to convince the community. Now. The community should believe that they have to uh, educate their girls now. We are not at this stage by now, but we are working towards that, so that we start to by convincing the community to send their children and their, particularly the girls to school. This is the problem is in these four regions, uh, and the other one that we have uh, uh, that we have a problem is now we have worked at the primary level. When we worked in the primary level and increased the number of children, uh, obviously we need also to expand the secondary level of education. But we were not able to do that one. Now the enrollment rate for the secondary school is, uh, is 40%. Imagine now. It was 97% for the primary school now. When you go up then, uh, we didn't work on that, so we will do. We will focus on this in the in 2015. And uh, the the other one is now let me because I don't I have to rush, so let me focus on the quality. The problem we have is the basic problem we have is quality of education, the quality of teachers, the quality of uh, the, the the curriculum materials, and the quality of even the school facilities. We expand a lot of schools, but not focusing on the quality. But our primary objective is to expand and to bring children to the schools now. So still there was a, any, I mean a great problem in quality of education. But now we are working on that even. But quality will not end up. It's actually will work on that. Uh, we will not finish our assignment on quality, uh, so we'll work on the quality. And the area, one of the area of focus in 2015, is the quality of education. So thank you very much for.